And let me go back to precision theory. I need to, to share my screen. Good. So this is our page, just one second. And I want to put the chat as usual visible, but I think I am okay. Now let's go back to decision theory, our page here. I am clicking on it. And uh, let me uh, go back. Uh, let me make a summary. I need, I really need to make a summary because as I said, I was not happy of, uh, I tell you why, of my previous lecture. And in fact, I changed it. If you go on, uh, on the last part, you see a new figure. This is uh, the, the part where I talked about pairwise comparison. So uh, let me go to the beginning of the of the section. This is the section we were discussing in the final part of the last lecture. And uh, as I said, I I added one figure, and uh, I changed this example here because it was not correct in the previous version. Or let's say it was. I mean, it was correct, but it was not clear. So. I, I want to make a summary for this reason. I want to go back to this uh, topic of uh, analytic hierarchy process, pairwise comparison applied to this example of build of uh, water resources availability, the figure that you can see here. But uh, before I, I want to make a premise before starting. First, let me know to the other website, which is larger. Here it is. So, one second. I get to here we are. Okay. Now, let me make, as I said, a premise related to, related to uh, the general framework. We are talking about discussions between, uh, among stakeholders and uh, between us and the stakeholders. And in order to make these discussions more efficient, more transparent, we are studying decision support systems. And basically, they are based on selecting criteria to judge, to select between different alternatives. So on the one hand, we have the alternatives to solve a problem, and usually they are design alternatives in this case is dam reducing losses uh, precise irrigation mm -hmm. these are the three alternatives and we have to decide uh, one of them <coughs> and uh, we have criteria so in order to make our decision easier we identified criteria and here we identified four criteria net benefit environmental impact impact on flow regime and the CO2 emissions. And the next question is uh, how to apply these four criteria to select the best alternative. Now, my premise is that in principle, when it is possible, it is not always possible. When it is possible, it's, uh, it's much better to set up uh, the structure of the decision without knowing the alternatives. So it is much better to establish the criteria and the way they are applied before knowing the alternatives. It's not always possible because in some cases the alternatives are known since the beginning by definition. Like if you have a water, if you have a water resources management problem, Usually, you are called into play because people are not able to select which is what is the best alternative. So they already know the alternatives. So in this case, it's not possible to decide the criteria before knowing the alternatives. But in other cases, you don't know the alternatives at the beginning. For instance, let's talk about the employment problem you are looking for a person to fill a vacancy for a job. And at the beginning, you don't know the candidates because usually, especially in the public administration, 
what we do is to set up the criteria before looking at the applications we received. This is the ideal situation. You don't know the alternatives and uh, you agree on, uh, um, on a decision, on, on a workflow for the decision without knowing the alternatives. Actually, as I said, uh, this is a, an ideal situation and ideal is um, in the full meaning of the term, ideal for uh, performing the best decision, for selecting the best decision ideal because uh, usually it's not doable even in the selection of the personnel actually even if you don't look at the application because uh, the administration doesn't give the applications to you but even if you don't get the application you may have side information and you may know that some people applied and therefore actually you already know the alternatives which is not uh, I, I mean, it's not the best situation, but any time that you can, if you can disclose the alternatives after the criteria and the whole workflow of the decision have been established, it's much better. And I tell you, in, in, in the university, we very often have the employment problems, so the selection of the best candidate. Every time that we can, we try to avoid the spread of information about the alternatives, in this case, uh, candidates. Actually, uh, you can do something for that. And uh, also in water resources management, it's possible because in some cases, the solution to a problem is not so obvious. And therefore, people may also call you into play because they have the problem, but they didn't identify, they have no idea of the solution. In this case, uh, you are asked not only to set up the criteria, but also to identify solutions. And when you can, this is the essence of my premise, if you can give uh, priority, if you can first decide the structure of the solution and then disclosing the alternatives, it's much better. Because otherwise, you know, even if you make an effort to set up a transparent process, but you already know what is your preferred final decision you know the process is not fully transparent now after having uh, um, given this premise uh, let me summarize once again this problem which we have here it's a problem of we need more water at the field and uh, in order to deliver more water at the field uh, i identified three alternatives so in this case we already know them okay and these three alternatives, I remind you, are building a dam, reducing losses, or adopting precise irrigation, adopting a more efficient irrigation. And uh, the dam has the advantage that it's something that you can really see, and therefore the convincing power of this solution usually is very high. On the other hand, there is an, a huge environmental impact uh, for many reasons, and uh, you may have uh, a lot of CO2 emissions for the construction. The other two alternatives have less convincing power, but have also less environmental impact and uh, less CO2 emissions. So we identified four criteria and these four criteria are the net benefit, the environmental impact, the impact on flow regime and CO2 emissions. OK, let's forget about uh, the fact that environmental impact and the impact on flow regime are a little bit correlated. Some people may say that they are correlated. It's much better when you select criteria if you avoid correlation between them. Uh, if they are independent, it's much better. But in any case, you can tolerate also a situation where they are correlated. It means that, uh, I mean, if you introduce two criteria for one only one meaning, which is the broad environmental impact, at the end of the story, you end up with giving more weight to environmental impact. This is the effect of introducing two correlated criteria. And, uh, you know, you give more weight to the environmental impact, and uh, which may be fine. But uh, in terms of uh, convincing power, and transparency of the process, you know, correlation is something that uh, it's not really transparent. If you put two criteria 
which are correlated it, it's not really transparent because some people may not understand that may not understand that it's uh, equivalent to putting more weight on the environmental impact and i just wanted here to give you this example because i, I wanted to discuss this okay which is something that you cannot formalize i mean it's difficult to say if they are correlated or not and uh, it's something that it's um, uh, it's, it's to be assessed by 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 your uh, i mean by by your experience and your intuition so there is uh, a question on the chat one second i check it so whoops one second a press article released that the new bridge in Genoa received its last section last week and the new bridge has been built in two years where the similar project can take capital to in Italy with the merge situation they adapted the station the contraction is still working in among of them do you think this can be a new edition of the Italian infrastructure <laughs> you know mm, I mean the problem is that um, i'm not really sure what does this mean the fact that they work in parallel with contractors i should i should um, i should look at this problem but by the way i was also involved in this problem because I, I i participated to the design of one of the alternatives which was not chosen at the end of the story and i participated because you know of course there is a river uh, under the bridge but uh, I don't really know what what does this mean working in parallel. I can tell you one thing that in this case the process was sped up, was quicker because of the emergency indeed. The emergency related to the fact that they need a new bridge as soon as possible. But uh, the, in order to speed up the process, to speed the process up, they had to release some of the constraints anti-corruption so they uh, the reason why <coughs> usually infrastructure works uh, take a long time in italy but also elsewhere is that you have to make sure that you have no corruption and therefore the selection process of the company is very long and it may happen that after the closure of the selection they appeal against the whole process and this makes the process longer so the need for transparency sometimes conflicts with uh, with the need for taking a quick decision in this case they decided that uh, to relax some of the constraints in the process i know i know that this is one of the reasons for for um, for uh, increasing the speed in this case i'm not really sure whether this is implied uh, in your statement. I, I should know something more. So I, if, uh, if uh, the question is about, uh, in general, this model to be exported and to other works, uh, I don't think so. Because uh, under emergency, you know, and I can, uh, there are some procedures that cannot be exported because otherwise, uh, you know that one of the key topics today under the emergency of the pandemic is uh, is um, to make sure that with this uh, speed, uh, these uh, very quick procedures that we are using now, there is transparency and no corruption, no mafia, uh, because you know it's uh, al always a problem when you when you are under an emergency, the corruption, etc. And uh, I can tell you that in the university, in order, for instance, to buy all the PC that we needed to teach online, we relaxed uh, our controls uh, on uh, on transparency of the selection of uh, of uh, our sellers. And uh, this is fine, I mean, uh, because you cannot really make any check in, in an emergency situation. But on the other hand, uh, during the emergency is fine. But in a normal situation, I wouldn't say that. So if you say that for instance if you ask me do you think that the administration of the university during the emergency is opening a new world i would say no because we really relaxed many of the controls on transparency and uh, and uh, i don't think in a normal situation we can we can uh, use the same procedures because otherwise it's a trouble 
it's really a trouble. Even if people don't do it on purpose, even if uh, people are uh, inherently fair, I mean, we all are biased and, and therefore, you know, it, it, it's, um, it's difficult. Okay, let me go back to, to our problem. So, uh, so as I said, uh, as, as I said, we have these four criteria and let's forget about their independency. Now, we have to uh, set up the first mission, the first task that we have is to set up a way to quantify them. How to quantify the net benefit of each solution? How to quantify the environmental impact? I didn't speak about this last time. How to quantify the impact on the flow regime, etc. And uh, the only thing I said last time is all of these criteria must be in the range zero one because they need to be compared each other. Okay, so I just mentioned that we can use utility functions to quantify these uh, these uh, criteria. Okay, what is a utility function? A utility function is uh, um, a function which uh, assigns uh, to each uh, alternative or let's say to each let's uh, make the example of the benefit the net benefit which is simpler it's simpler because uh, it's uh, it, it results from an economic computation okay okay now what is the utility function the utility function applied to the net benefit assigns to each possible value of the benefit a value between 0 and 1 so it rescales the benefit in the range 0 1 okay and how it is done this rescaling it is dictated by the precisely the utility function now let's look let's have a look at the new figure that i put here this is an example of a utility function. You see on the horizontal axis, the x-axis, you have uh, your, uh, your um, benefit, for instance. x is benefit. Okay? Perfect. And uh, on the vertical axis, you have utility. Utility ranges from 0 to 1. And uh, this is... Uh, uh, first definition and if you look at the bullet point that are above the figure let me increase the font look at the bullet point utility zero is assigned to the minimum of each criteria for instance for the case of the net benefit one may assign utility zero to the alternative that leads to the minimum benefit or utility zero can be assigned to the null benefit in this case of this figure utility zero is assigned to the zero value of x so if x is your net benefit then we give utility zero to the zero benefit look this is uh, a decision that you have to take with your stakeholders because the benefit could also be negative because if you have a damage instead of a benefit it may also be negative and therefore utility zero may be given to a negative benefit it's a decision that you have to take if the benefit is limited to zero you can give utility zero to the zero benefit but you may also decide to give utility zero if you have three alternatives and in this case we have three alternatives you can give utility zero to the lowest benefit among the alternatives which is fine but the effect on the final decision is different. And uh, you may look, uh, we, we will have uh, um, an example later on, an exercise. You may look at the, what is the effect of changing the utility functions on the final decision. And then you assign utility one to the max benefit. So if you have three alternatives, again, you have one of them that gives the max. To that max benefit, you give utility one. And then it is required, look at the third bullet point, 
that increasing values of the criteria, in this case, increasing value of the benefit, where increasing means that the criteria is more useful, okay? To increasing values of the criteria, you have to give increasing utility. In this case, uh, the utility function is a linear function, which is, I mean, uh, a reasonable solution for net benefit. But uh, you may also decide to use a nonlinear function because you may decide that above a certain benefit, it, it doesn't matter anymore to you if you increase the benefit more. If you get more money above a given threshold, you may say, I don't care. So, so you give utility one to the max value of the benefit for which you care. And then if you get more, you continue to give utility one. Conversely, you may decide that if you don't reach a minimum value of the benefit, utility is zero. So you may give utility zero to benefit ranging, look at this figure, from zero to eight, for instance. And then from eight to 20, you may get a linear function. Because you may say up to a minimum benefit of eight, uh, utility for me is zero. So utility is uh, a good way of translating a criteria like net benefit into a scale between zero and one that reflects the utility of your criteria with respect to the stakeholders. And now we have a first problem, deciding this utility function. And we forget it for now. For now, we can forget it by taking the utility function for given. I just want to tell you that um, you may use pairwise comparison for, for setting up a utility function. And I, I give you an example. For instance, if you have three alternatives, dam, reducing losses, precise irrigation, you may make a pairwise comparison among them with respect to the benefit. So without any calculation, you could ask people, do you think it gives uh, more benefit a dam or a reduction of losses? And some people may give a score of seven to the dam. Remember, seven means uh, much more, much more important, much more preference. Some people may give to the dam a lower score. And then by making pairwise comparison and taking the average of the responses between people, you may end up in three weights for the three alternatives. And then you can give uh, you can give utility one to the max weight and utility zero to the lower weight. So this case is not. Uh, described here. Here we take the utility function for granted. I just wanted to tell you that uh, in order to decide the utility function, you can use a whatever, a whatever decision process. And actually, let me say that in the previous version of this lecture, the example that I gave, application of the pairwise comparison, actually referred to this referred to the determination of the utility function, but it was not well explained, so I decided to remove it and substitute it with an example which is more pertinent to the present case. But for the present case and our exercise, as you will see, we take the utility function for granted. Look, the same utility function can be given for each other criteria. So if you take the environmental impact, it's more difficult to evaluate with respect to the net benefit because the net benefit, you make an economic computation and you end up with it. The environmental impact, there are several ways to evaluate it. One way can be an economic computation because you can estimate the damage given by the impact and also what, how much does it cost to remediate to it. 
so you can to recover from it so you can make an economic computation or you can make an assessment which is uh, uh, which avoids any economic computation keep in mind that when you talk about environmental impact uh, usually people don't like that you you talk about money because they see the value of the environment as something that is you know cannot be translated by in in monetary terms and therefore i suggest you that when you talk about environmental impact or uh, ecologic impact uh, i suggest if it's possible to avoid the use of the economic parallel and in this case you can use precisely pairwise comparison for instance or you can use uh, some other uh, some other way of computing it like uh, pooling people getting people's opinion and you make an average like uh, you may ask people do you suffer by the visual impact of the dam and so the majority of the people may say no at all and this means that uh, the visual impact uh, you can say it's not very relevant and uh, so I, it, it is the determination estimation of the utility function is a case study specific problem but let's take it for granted okay so let's suppose that for each of these three alternatives uh, dams uh, reducing losses precise irrigation we have uh, the utility function that allows us for each criteria for each criteria to give a score between zero and one to the three alternatives okay and this is given by precisely the utility function and in this case uh, this figure refers to a generic uh, x-axis uh, but you may have on the x-axis the economic impact, the environmental impact, by referring to the three alternatives. So you may have on this x-axis dam, precise irrigation, reduction of losses, and for each criteria it gives to you the utility. Still, we have the problem that we have four criteria and we have to combine them. Okay, so we have four scores four criteria, four scores for each alternative, four scores for dam, four scores for reduction of losses, four scores for precise irrigation. And uh, of course we have to combine them. Combine them through weights. Weights of what? Weights of each score. Now we have to decide what is the importance of net benefit with respect to let me go up with respect to environmental impact what is the importance of uh, environmental impact with respect to the impact on flow regime and what is the importance of uh, each criteria with respect to co2 emissions this is what we have to decide by assigning weights we have to estimate four weights if you look at this figure we have uh, four weights w1 w2 w3 w4 these are highlighted here only for the dam alternative but you can put uh, the same labels in also the other two alternatives and so I, for each alternative let's focus on the dam the dam let's suppose that we know these four weights and we know the utility of uh, the dam for each of the criteria so we know what if we call the net benefit the utility of the net benefit we call it n we use the symbol n to identify the utility of the net benefit then for the net benefit we get the weight its weight w1 and we get the three utilities one per each alternative and one and two and three and then we can go to the environmental impact we have its weight w2 and then we have the three utilities of the environmental impact for each alternative e1 e2 e3 
Now, let's focus on one alternative, the dam. We know that uh, the dam has four utilities, one for each impact. So the dam has uh, the utility N1 for the ben net benefit, E1 for the environmental impact, R1 for the impact on flow regime, and C1 for CO2 emissions. Now we can combine these four utilities with the four weights. So we compute, I think there is somewhere here the computation. Let me see. I just move forward. Let one second. Mm, I am sure that somewhere just one second, I'm going back to find where is the computation, but uh, let, let me describe it first. And uh, so we can compute N1 utility of the dam for the net benefit times W1. And then we sum E1 utility of the dam for the environmental impact times W2 and so forth. And this is our way of getting the overall score for the dam. Sorry, the computation is here. If you look at the, at the, I'm sorry that you don't see my mouse, but if you look at the figure in the pink rectangle labeled dam, below the writing dam, you have the computation of the overall score of the dam, W1 and 1 plus W2 E1 plus W3 R1 plus W4 C1. Okay, and this gives to you the result, the overall score of the dam. You can make the same computation for reducing losses and you can make the same computation for the third alternative precise irrigation. And then you end up with three overall scores and the highest is your preferred decision what we still need to know to compute are the weights because the utility functions are given i said let's assume that they are given now we have to compute the weights and how to compute the weights through pairwise comparison and we need to compare the weights in pairs now let me go down and uh, here is uh, the matrix uh, for the importance uh, of uh, each, uh, each uh, member of the pair in the pairwise comparison and then uh, we need to compute this matrix. This is changed with respect to last time. Here last time I had the comparison between the three alternatives. And this can be used for computing the utility function, but uh, our case actually refers to the use of pairwise comparison for computing the weights uh, of each criteria. So here you have the four criteria and uh, the meaning of the symbols, uh, look at the caption of the table here. Okay, so N is net benefit, E is uh, environmental impact, R is impact on the river flow reg regime and C is CO2 emission. So let's suppose that we give these weights. So in the diagonal, I have the units. When I compare the net benefit N with the environmental impact E, I tried to make a double selection. Let me see, no, it's not possible. Anyway, when I compare N with E, I give an, a score of seven which means that this user actually really likes the dam because uh, basically he says, I don't care about environmental impact. The net benefit is much, uh, sorry, I wanted to, I, I, the, the user really likes the money because not, not just the dam. He really likes the money because when he compares the net benefit with environmental impact, it gives a score of seven. Like, uh, look, I really don't care about the environmental impact. I care about money. And also, if you look at the comparison between the net benefit and the impact on the river flow regime, it looks like uh, he gives more weight to, to the money again. 
not in the same importance because maybe that this user is concerned by the river flow regime. Maybe that this user is also, this stakeholder is also concerned by tourism, I don't know. And, and so it gives uh, less weight uh, to money with respect to the previous comparison with the environmental impact. And also CO2 emissions, it looks like the user doesn't care about the CO2 emission, he looks about money. Okay, this is what I can see from the first, uh, from the first row. And then if I go to the second row, then uh, the user is asked to compare the environmental impact with respect to the net benefit and the result is 1.7 because it's the symmetric of, uh, of uh, the 7 that was given there. Okay. And uh, let me select again the row. Okay, here we are. So now in the diagonal there is one, and when he compares the environmental impact with respect to the impact on the river flow, uh, then it gives uh, to, um, I think, in a little bit inconsistent way, it gives more weight to the environmental impact, which is a little bit inconsistent with what it was written in the previous uh, um, row. But okay, this may be fine because, uh, you know, inconsistency can be there. I wanted to put it in the table because it, it can be there. And then one third because it's the result uh, of uh, a symmetric comparison. But uh, let's say um, the symmetry is comes later here one third because when comparing the environmental impact with uh, with uh, the co2 emission he doesn't believe that the environmental impact is important this is consistent i would say with the, the first row one third okay and then we turn to the next uh, next uh, row which is uh, river flow regime and uh, we have uh, some uh, symmetric computations here and uh, basically one fourth here is symmetric of the four that you can see in the first uh, in the first row while the one fourth here is symmetric with respect to the four that you find in the second row and then uh, there is one on the diagonal and one third uh, with respect to, to uh, the CO2 emission, which is fine. And then the final row is the result of the symmetric computations. I hope this is clear and uh, now is clearer than last time. And uh, then we have to check the consistency and uh, we already described it. So I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not discussing uh, this again. And for checking the consistency, I, I said that we have to compute eigenvectors and eigenvalues and then compute this consistency index and compare, compute the consistency ratio for which we have suggested values depending on the size of the matrix. Okay, so this is my recap. Now I think we are ready for making an exercise which is a little bit different with respect to the example that I gave here, but uh, uh, you will see that the exercise will help you uh, to uh, fully understand the uh, situation, the example. Okay, I think we can make a break of uh, 15 minutes. Do you have any question?